stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app. You may not know his name, but you definitely know his creation. Victor Gruen designed the first modern indoor mall. Victor Gruen considered this a utopian experiment. That's because the architect of Southdale Center was a socialist, and this was his new vision for suburbia. He wanted to get people out of their cars. He was worried that everyone would go from their private house, their private car, to their private office and back, and never get to know their neighbors, never have any interaction. So that was the idea of the mall. The vibrant community Victor Gruen created in this Minnesota mall was inspired by the bustling street life of Vienna, Austria, where he grew up. He had studied architecture at the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, the same school that had rejected an aspiring artist named Adolf Hitler 10 years earlier. When Hitler's interests turned more sinister, Victor Gruen, who was Jewish, fled to America. It is a new concept fitting to a particular situation. Gruen soon made a name for himself in New York, designing spectacular storefronts across the city. But he recognized the retail action in post-war America was shifting to the suburbs, and he didn't like what he saw. Victor Gruen was dismayed by the unsightly commercial strips sprawling for miles on end, what he called the greatest collection of vulgarity ever collected by mankind. So he thought if we don't intervene, we're just going to have large tracts of development with no center. Gruen got his chance to remake suburbia in 1952 when the Dayton Company hired him to design an indoor shopping mall in a Minneapolis suburb. While a small neighborhood mall had been enclosed before, Southdale is where Victor Gruen introduced the formula for the regional indoor shopping mall, a formula that has Gruen's idealistic vision written all over it. Look at this big blank wall here. What's the purpose of that? Well, Victor Gruen called this the introverted type, and what he really wanted to do was to take the typical suburban shopping center, which faced out to the street, and flip that. This way, Gruen could take all that sprawling commercial clutter he hated and hide it in a central facility with a plain exterior. So that the stores faced inward into an air-conditioned space. Inside, it was a shopper's paradise, 72 stores under one roof. But this wasn't just a place to buy things. At its center was the Garden Court of Perpetual Spring, which featured a goldfish pond and an aviary, sculptures and a sidewalk cafe. There was even a small zoo in the basement. At Southdale, suburbanites could get out of their cars and enjoy all the benefits of a downtown without all the traffic and dirt. So he really envisioned malls as community centers rather than as places that you simply go to shop. This urban-like setting was also good for business. The experience was so dazzling and fun, customers stayed longer and shopped more. The windows were placed high above so shoppers wouldn't be distracted by what was going on in the outside world. A little bit like a casino. They didn't want people to actually look outside. The socialist architect had created a capitalist cash cow. On the day Southdale opened, 75,000 curiosity seekers came out to see what Life magazine dubbed the splashiest shopping center in the U.S. Though it did have at least one detractor, Frank Lloyd Wright came for a tour and said the Garden Court had all the evils of the village street and none of its charm. You've tried to bring downtown out here. You should have left downtown, downtown. Over time, Victor Gruen himself grew disillusioned with his grand experiment. You see, he had envisioned the shopping center as just one piece of a larger planned community, which was supposed to include houses, apartments, offices, and schools. Gruen hoped this would be a compact and well-ordered alternative to sprawl and blight. Now that all didn't come to pass. And so in many ways, the most important part of Gruen's vision hasn't been realized. Instead, Southdale became an isolated island of retail in a sea of parking. And this is what large swaths of suburban America came to look like as Southdale was imitated far and wide. Gruen called these copycat malls bastard developments. They lacked his larger social vision 
and instead attracted more of the sprawl he had tried so desperately to fight. And I think that that's the, the kind of the tragedy of it. We didn't understand the depth and breadth of his vision.